So, why Jamtis in the first place? Just a, kind of a, a quick recap. So, current crypto addresses do not have outgoing view keys, so you cannot see any, any transaction information going out in a consistent manner. We'll talk about more about that later. So we'll just look ahead tables, take up a lot of memory. Uh, we've got Janus attacks, too many address types, so we should have another type. Just kidding. But, and then address generation requires view access or payment IDs. Cake wallets probably messed with this, you know. You need, if you, if you want to like generate new addresses, accept an arbitrary amount of payments, you need your spend keys or you need view access uh, to the payment IDs. And most importantly, importantly to me is Lightwall's privacy kind of sucks. So let's talk about that. Why does it suck? Uh, so as you can see in this fancy little diagram here, uh, whenever you give your view key to an LWS, a light wallet server, they can see all incoming uh, e -note information, amounts included, even for your change e -notes. So what this means is that combining it with ring info, and Justin Berman did a really good uh, talk about this about a year ago at the previous MoneroCon. View keys, well, they're only supposed to see incoming, about 95% of the time actually see all transaction details, uh, so it's pretty terrible for privacy, but you also can't build any actual like apps to depend on outgoing amounts. Uh, so let's create a new scheme that addresses all these issues. And then disclaimer, uh, a lot of this work is uh, Yuko's and Tevador's. I just added a little modification to it. So credit where credit is due, they did the majority of this, this Jamtis work. So, so how Jamtis already improves light wallet privacy is we have a between the sender and the receiver, just like CryptoNote, we have a shared secret. So they have a public, they put a public key on the chain and there's a public key inside of the address. You do a shared secret between those two. Um, and in CryptoNote addresses, that shows all information. That shows everything, like I was talking about, you get to see amounts, you get to know for sure that they've received a E note to a certain address. So Jamtis already uh, hides some of that information. So you get to see a view tag and what's called a new thing called an address tag. We'll talk about that later. And then the other transaction information is hidden. But that, that address tag will become a problem. So, uh, oh, and then what we can do is we can give what's called the filter, uh, the find received key is the old name for it. And you can give that to a light wallet server. What they can do is they can calculate the view tag and the address tag for all the e notes. They don't get the amounts. They don't get to say for sure that you own something. So that's, that's the key that you would give to your light wallet server. And they get to, so that view tag is about one byte worth of information. And that means that there's 256 different values for it. They can, they can prune down your, your scanning volume by about 99.6%. About. <laughs> there's, there's, some, there's some rough details there. There's a, a one in 256. <laughs> so that's basically what I was saying. One byte can hold 256 values. So if it matches, the chances that someone unrelated to you matching that is about one in 256. So that allows you to massively reduce the amount of scanning you have to do. So what are some downsides to this approach? So the address tags actually are just 128-bit chunks of information encoded in the public address. So this is actually public information some of the time to your receivers. Um, but you generate them randomly, and since 128 bits, the chance that while the light wallet server is scanning, if two, two address tags show up, then that's like an overwhelming probability that it is the same person, and you probably know that they own that e-note. You don't know what amount it is, but they probably own those two. And in a similar vein, the, if you already know the address and you see the address tag while you're scanning, then you know for sure they own that e-note, which is not ideal. And, and then further, you cannot give someone a secret that lets you generate addresses on your behalf, because if you do, they can use the address tags to find out all the, all the times that you've received Monero. Even though they don't know the amounts, they know for sure you are involved receiving those transactions. And then there's also the problem of if you have too many view tags within the same transaction, 
uh, you can accumulate exponentially the probability that all these view tags match, because that sh normally should never happen. So for example, what I have here is, if you have 16 view tags that match, that's eight bits times 16, 128 bits, that should basically never happen ever for any reason. The probability that would just randomly happen if you're unrelated to that transaction is about the same chance as you guessing someone's AES key randomly on the first try. So if that happens, you can probably say, yeah, this guy's involved with this transaction. And then, and then finally, one issue we want to talk about is, so how did we decide the 256 value? How do we decide 99.6% scaling? Why is that a good value? Is it a good value? So the, when you, whenever you have a fixed size, one byte, you're, you're basically stuck with that. Whether we know if that's gonna be good or not in the future is unknown. We might want it to be smaller. Maybe we only want to cut down the anonymity size 50 times. and We only care about cutting it down 50. What if we want 2,000 transactions per second and we want to cut it down way more in the future? Uh, we don't really have a, a way to change that as is. So let's start, start, start talking about how we can fix some of these. So going back to that original example, this is how the new, the new version would work. As you can see, there's, there's two shared secrets now. Before there was one shared secret, now there's two. The first one only unlocks the primary view tag. And then there's a secondary view tag. The second key unlocks all the other transaction information in that secondary view tag. And so what you would do is you would give the first key the filter assist key to the light wallet server and keep the, the other key private to yourself. So now that they don't have that key, there is no way for them to derive any of this other transaction information. So this does require a increase to the size in the addresses. So we go from, so this is the crypto note address on the bottom. This is what it would have been with the older Jamtis scheme, new Jamtis scheme, quite a bit bigger. It still fits in a tweet. Uh, I'm not going to call it an X. <laughs> so, and then a good question would be, now that we're doing two shared secret exchanges, is this going to be twice as slow? And that's a good question, but no. So the first, we, because we change, uh, we check view tags in between the two shared secrets, we actually only check the second one about one in 256 times, assuming a one, a one byte view tag. So that ends up only making it about four, 0.4% slower. For, for uh, let, me, let me clarify, that's for full wallet scanning. So if you never use light wallet server, this feature will only set you back 0.4% in scanning time. So, uh, let's just skip this part. This is, so in, in, in the old address tags, there's a little thing called a hint, and we wanna replace that and add a new view tag in that that makes sure that we, we, we can view tag lists that skip a lot of operations and optimize things. So because the light wallet server, uh, because we're not, it doesn't know the view tags anymore, it cannot check that for us. And we have to do a ECD exchange instead of a cipher operation, which on the client side is about 100 times slower. But since the, the bandwidth was already about 100 times lower, so it'd be 65,000 times faster with old Jamtis is about 100 times slower than that. Still about 100 times faster than a normal wallet, but that's a trade-off to keep in mind. So yeah, you might be asking the question, why are there two view tags now? Um, Email? <laughs> yeah. We want a view tag for after the second secret exchange to replace the address tag hint uh, for performance. But now what we can do is we can actually mix these two we can take a mixture of the first one and the second one, and this gives us some, some bit of flexibility. Where's the, where the term flexible comes in? We can have a sort of degree of fuzziness, how we want to match, mix and match these two. So if we had a high number of NP bits, that means the, view, the primary view tag is going to be very large, and that means that we get to, we get to crunch down on the scanning quite a bit. Um, but yeah, just, just having some, some value that lets us have, have a knob that changes this, this mixing, lets us, lets us give, a, give us a little bit of flexibility. So this is just what I was saying. So high MP of its value, lots of, lots of crunching down on scanning, but worse for anonymity, but now you can make the trade off, whereas before you were not able to. So, and then tackling the uh, view tag privacy issues. 
But going back to this issue where you've got too many that match, the, the, the simple solution is just don't have them match. And then what this means for the light wallet side um, is that you're going to have to send all of the e-notes in a transaction if one of them matches. So that does increase bandwidth. This is a, this is a change we can go with, maybe, maybe not. Whether we want to is, is kind of up in the air, but this would make it so that pocket change or churning uh, is still, still very private. Um, yeah, so the, even if you don't match all the, the E notes in this transaction, you still have to send all of them the light, on the light wallet side. Okay, so let's recap. That was a lot of information. There's a nice, succinct table of the features we can expect with the new JamTIS. So current light wallet, uh, it's, uh, excuse me, current light wallets do not hide any E note information. They do not hide churns and pocket change. Uh, and they don't have any kind of adjustable mechanism for, for adjusting this. Uh, and they cannot generate use addresses on the user's behalf without a huge, huge, huge drop in privacy. Um, and yeah, but so the one thing I want to discuss here is that we don't have a near instant sync anymore. It's still going to be about 100 times faster than a full wallet. It's not going to be uh, near instant because we do st have to send about 0.4% of on-chain data. Okay, so... Enabled use cases. Uh, so one, one thing that, that can happen now, whenever you let people generate addresses on your behalf, uh, one thing you could do with that is, for example, you could make a Venmo, and you can have the, the service generate addresses for you on your behalf. So if I want to connect to Luke, for example, and pay him some money, uh, I don't have to interact with him. I don't have to like tweet with him. It's just kind of a nice, easy little gener generates an address for me. And it does that for each individual person completely non-interactive, and that can be a, there's proof, so that can be non-interactively verified. Um, and then peer run LWS, it's a lot easier sell to have someone run an LWS on your behalf if you're not also like, I can see all of your transaction data. <laughs> and, so now you don't see all their transaction data, but you still get, get to give them the gift of fast syncing, um, which is, my friends bug me about that a lot of the time. Uh, and then, so cold, wallet, cold hot wallet setups, if you want to be really paranoid, this will make those setups even more private than they are now. So normally how it works is you have a view, view key, scans it on the hot side, and you move that information over to the cold side, and then you move the key image data back over to the hot side. Now you can completely keep the, the, hot, the, the cold side, the spend cold, completely cold, and you can have, the, have it scan uh, on the do, the do the second part of the scanning on a device that's like semi-cold. And uh, if, you, if you really like air gap solutions, this, this helps you with that. Um, and then more secure self-ran LWS. Some people like to run their own light wallet server. Like there's an, uh, there's an open source version of Open Monero, or my Monero called Open Monero. And you can run that yourself. Um, but if that one were to get hacked, you would be giving basically your entire balance over and all of your transaction history, with some exceptions. Now you would not be giving that. You'd only be giving away 4% of the blockchain data in total, and they can't deterministically gain any information from that. Let's see. Yeah, and then private pocket chains and light wallets, which is not possible before. So what's left? So there are still a few attacks on this. It's not completely free, besides the uh, speed. It's also not completely private, excuse me. Pointed at the laptop. Okay, that was, that was what I was missing. <laughs> All right. So, light wallets can, st or the servers can still uh, probabilistically correlate users based on their number of view tag matches and shared transactions. So if you, if we have a network and the, the server has a whole bunch of people's keys all in one place and I send a whole bunch of transactions to my friend over and over and over again, they can see that we have a statistically unlikely number of transactions that have, both have view tags inside of them. So they can use that to probabilistically to make a social graph of sorts. So that's, that's one attack. And the other one is, let's say, let's, let's say uh, someone used an early example of this. Let's say you were buying uh, unpasteurized milk from someone, say 20 times, and then they get busted because it's unpasteurized. And then, so someone has their transaction set. You're, you're, you're going to have 
primary view tags that match inside of that transaction set a statistically higher number of times. And the more times you interact with them, that, that probability gets exponentially higher. They still can't see anything deterministic, but they can say with a higher likelihood that you might be involved with these transactions if your counterparty and your light wallet server get compromised. And yeah, that's about all I have.